By dawn's early light, millions of Americans give thanks for this land, our liberties, and those who defend it. That same pride inspired the words of our national anthem, penned here as the smoke of battle lifted over two centuries ago. When those American soldiers bravely fought and died repelling the British onslaught, they did so not only for our people, which that flag represented, but for our principles, for which the flag stood, our God-given freedoms, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, equality under the law, government by the people. These are the threads that bind us together as Americans, for we are not a nation born of blood, but of belief. And even though that old flag has sometimes been battered and beaten, faded and forgotten, fired upon and set ablaze, there are heroes throughout our history who have picked up those tattered strands, mended them, and raised our flag anew. Just as the soldiers at Fort McHenry fought in defense of the beliefs that bind us today, there are new leaders who have devoted their life to do the same. Greetings across the amber waves of grain. This is Mike Pence. Across Indiana highways and homes, his voice warmly welcomed Hoosiers each morning. Mike Pence filled the radio waves with conservative commentary, guarding our American ideals. But much like the man who inspired him, Mike didn't grow up a Republican. As President Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. His grandfather was a hardworking Irish immigrant who drove a bus to provide for his family. His father served our nation bravely in the Korean War and earned a bronze star. Mike was the third of six children raised here in Columbus, Indiana, with a cornfield in his backyard. The foundation of America is freedom, and the foundation of freedom is faith. It was in this small Indiana town his foundation of faith in Jesus Christ was laid, and from that conviction sprung his love of people and service to others. It was at a church service where Mike met the love of his life, Karen. They married and have three children, Michael, Charlotte, and Audrey. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican, in that order. Mike became the president of a free market think tank, the host of a statewide conservative radio show, and then a congressman. In Washington, Mike quickly became known as a foremost defender of freedom. He led conservatives in the fight to protect our time-honored values of family, faith, life, liberty, and limited government. Our nation's strength begins at home because strong families make a strong America. Mike earned the trust of the people of his state and became the 50th governor of Indiana. He delivered the largest state tax cut in Indiana history, expanded school choice, led the country in manufacturing, and helped more Hoosiers get to work than ever before. But he wasn't through. ABC News has learned that Donald Trump will choose Indiana Governor Mike Pence to be his running mate. I would like to introduce a man who I truly believe will be the next vice president of the United States, Governor Mike Pence. As our vice president, Mike Pence has held tightly to those threads of freedom woven through our history. Leading with those principles alongside President Trump, our nation experienced prosperity like never before. He is solid as a rock. He's been a fantastic vice president. And now, in these uncertain days, we are equipped to overcome. In times of trouble, some call to retreat from those ideals. But Americans throughout history have lifted them in triumph, hope, and resilience. Mike Pence knows those stars and stripes do not merely represent who we are, but more importantly, what we can be. As the sun rises again on America, we lift our eyes to those lofty truths to guide our country and every one of us to greater heights. In this land of the free and home of the brave. Vice President Mike Pence. Because the truth is, we live in a time when freedom is under assault. But the freedom to live, to work, 
to worship God are all being threatened by the radical left every day. It's true. The same people who want to take away your unalienable rights routinely denigrate the faith of millions of Americans and advocate late-term abortion and even infanticide. We are in a battle between liberty and tyranny. And ultimately, it's a battle between freedom and socialism. The same Democrats that want to take away your freedom openly advocate a failed economic system that has robbed the liberty and impoverished millions of people around the world. But let's be clear. It was freedom, not socialism, that gave us the most prosperous economy in the history of the world. It was freedom, not socialism, that ended slavery, won two world wars, and stands today as a beacon of hope for all the world. It was freedom, not socialism, that's moving us beyond the prejudices of the past to create a more perfect union and extend the blessings of liberty to every American, regardless of race or creed or color. And it was freedom, not socialism, that gave us the highest quality of life, the cleanest environment, and improve the health and well-being of millions around the world. You know, Margaret Thatcher probably said it best. The trouble with socialism is you eventually run out of other people's money. So I say from my heart to all of you, freedom-loving Americans gathered here. The moment America becomes a socialist country is the moment America ceases to be America. And as President Trump said in his State of the Union address, so we must say with one voice, America will never be a socialist country.